Hello, welcome to Lady Applejack Speaks VA, a VA channel here on YouTube that focuses on the Netflix series, Stranger Things. I am back with another episode, but before I go into that episode, I am giving a quick disclaimer. Guys, small town is still happening. <laughs> I've had people asking me if I just don't want to do it anymore or what, but I do, I do, and in fact... I've got at least one script ready that I'm going to be posting this weekend. Um, so I will give you a little bit of a spoiler that I am conjuring up some things. Okay? Think about that. That That's the only Easter egg I'm dropping for Series 1. But um, the goal is I want to have Series 1 at least one script up tomorrow. I'm going to try my very best... Well, it's not tomorrow, it's today. Today's Saturday. Um, it's currently after 4 o'clock in the morning, and here we are. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to be working on that sometime later this evening, I want to say. I, I have a few errands I have to run. I have to go check on my parents and all that. It, it's, it's a hot mess. But anyways, um, so that's going to be happening. Keep an eye out. I think it's going to be a fun one, and I think you might want to make sure you have enough milk in your fridge for it. So just saying. Anyhow, yes. So this episode is for series two, Why Can't This Be Love, where we follow the storyline of Eddie Munson and Liz Hargrove. Liz Hargrove is an original character I created, and she is the younger biological sister of Billy Hargrove. So a lot has been going on with this series, and it's it's morphed into its own little thing, you know, because when I first started this, it wasn't going to be a series. It was going to be a one time. And it was so funny because it was a request that was put in and it was a one time shot thing that I was going to do. And I was going to be like, OK, that's done. And then I started writing it and I started thinking, oh, this might actually be a good series. Let me go ahead and see how other people feel about. It. So I threw out a pilot episode you guys came back, said, hey, we like this. And I just continued on with it. And it was supposed to stay very lighthearted and very fun. And like in the TV show, it kind of morphed into something else. So, yes, it's been kind of a, a rough one for us lately. But I am just going to say people have been asking for spoilers. So I'm going to go ahead and say... Beside that comment that I keep saying something's coming, there is another thing that I want you guys to put in the back of your mind. Okay? Get ready. Things are not as they always seem. All right? Keep that in the back of your mind. Put that back there. Tuck it away. Whatever you have to do. Things are not as always what they seem, okay? So, with that being said, let's talk about this episode. This episode is rated PG-13 for strong language, mentions of drugs, and there are trigger warnings. Um, there is an indication of eating disorder. Um, there is mental health crisis, which I think says a lot for itself, and then mentions of sexual assault and physical violence. Um, these are kind of themes that we have been dealing with for the last couple episodes. So yes, if you are triggered by any of what I just said and you don't feel comfortable listening to this episode, I understand. No harm, no foul. You could go over to my Instagram and actually message me and ask me for uh, an episode summary for series two, episode 14. And I'll be happy to pass that on to you. I usually have a turnaround of 24 hours. So just kind of keep that in mind. It might not be right away, but I promise you I will get you a summary. Um, <clears throat> besides that, um, this is, like I said, episode 14. And it takes place on December 20th, 1985, which would have been on a Friday. So this is the last day before winter break starts for Hawkins High School. We have a lot of key characters here that are going to be in this episode, and it might 
be a little bit of a doozy, so I'm going to just try to break it down as quick as I can. We have our usual Eddie Munson and Liz Hargrove. They will be doing vocals, and they will also have narratives. So you can fourth wall those narratives, or you can think of it as internal POV. Um, we have Billy Hargrove. He has some vocals. We have a little, little tiny bit of Chrissy Cunningham. So she has a little bit of vocals in there. And then lastly, we have, well, that's not lastly. There's one more. I almost forgot. We have a couple vocals from Max, nothing too much. Um, and then we have a mystery person or thing. It really depends on how you see it. Um, that is going to be coming near the end of the episode. Well, actually, no. They're, they're, they're kind of littered throughout. You'll find out. You'll find out what I'm talking about. So keep an eye out for those. Um, and this episode is titled God Only Knows. Um, you guys know how I usually try to stick to song titles for these because I just feel like song titles is very Eddie Munson. Um, God Only Knows was written by a band called the Beach Boys. I'm sure you all heard of them before. Um, it's one of my favorite Beach Boy songs that they did. And I think it's one of the most brilliant ones that Brian Wilson, one of the co-founders of co-founders of the Beach Boys, had produced. And it's it's kind of crazy because when he wrote this, he was trying to mimic the sound that the Beatles were doing at the time. This was in 1966. And his dad was very judgmental. And he played the song for him. And he actually wrote this song for his first wife, Marilyn. And it was supposed to be a love song. And uh, his dad hated the song. Hated it. His dad was very judgy. And he was, he was abusive. And he was just not a good person overall. And... Brian Wilson was told, you know, this song's crap. It's not going to go anywhere. And he released it. And the song, like, topped the charts. Like, there was so many people that just loved that song. And it actually inspired Paul McCartney to write some really great songs after that. Because he heard God Only Knows and was like, oh my god, that that's a, such a beautiful song. I need to write my own version. So, yeah, um... I gave you a little history lesson there. Sorry, that happens sometimes with me. <laughs> but yeah, if you ever get curious about the song titles, all you have to do is like type type them in YouTube and they'll pop right up. But God Only Knows is one of those classes, classic songs that I like. Um, and in turn, it's been mentioned quite a few times for Liz as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, this episode's going to be kind of long. It's 12 pages of a script. So keep that in mind. I will. I'm going to warn you guys. <laughs> if I get the balls. I, maybe. I, I might be singing in this. I, I don't know. I'm going to try. And I'm going to apologize now. Because I am not musically inclined. At least not singing wise. I... I I play guitar and I play bass and that's, that's about it. And, uh, I used to play trumpet a long time ago, but anyhow, I can't sing. I can't, I, I, I don't have it. My other two sisters, they sang, they sang beautifully. They were in the choir. Me on the other hand, I can't carry a tune in a bucket. So I apologize in advance for your ears. I hope, I hope they don't get too screwed up. <laughs> But yeah, um, with that being said, we'll just go ahead and jump in the episode. I hope you guys enjoy. Liz's point of view, two months later. I, I try keeping my eyes down at my still full lunch tray, ignoring the scene two lunch tables away from me. Hellfire had a new person to fill my seat. Chrissy Cunningham. 
Eddie and Chrissy, from what I can tell, have been hanging out a lot more lately. Billy told me that she had finally broken up with Carver and was now seeing Eddie. I didn't know if he was trying to be mean or not. Max, however, told me they were just friends. I I don't know what to believe in anymore, and maybe he did move on. And that's okay. One of us should be happy. Maybe Chrissy will be his reason to stick around in Hawkins. I try very hard to ignore Chrissy's laugh at something that one of the guys said. Closing my eyes tight and trying to focus on anything that my sleep-deprived brain could give me. But nothing seems to distract me anymore. Neil... He, he continues to assault me, almost nightly. Susan has turned a blind eye, and Billy, he, he always comes to me afterward, and he tries to care for my new injuries. And keep my morale up. He always tells me that he's getting closer to getting enough money together to get me out of here. I listen, but I don't believe him. With each passing day, a little part of me just slowly fades away. Time just takes away. Liz's point of view last night. Billy puts the fresh alcohol swab against the bite mark on my neck. I no longer wince at the sting. They're all too familiar now. My bloodshot eyes just stay closed, and finally I open them and focus on the snow on the ground outside. This would have been the first time I ever saw snow in person. When I was little, I used to watch those old Hollywood movies like It's a Wonderful Life, Miracle on 34th Street. And I always thought the snow looked so beautiful and clean and magical. I always thought that maybe when I first saw snow, it looked like that. It doesn't, though. Not now. It's nothing. Nothing special. That's going to leave a scar. You're going to have to wear a turtleneck to school tomorrow. Okay? Liz, I almost... Almost have enough money saved up. I I think by the end of next week, we'll be able to get you a bus ticket. Uh, we could use an alias. Max said Lucas has family in St. Louis. And uh, I guess they're really nice. And they can take you in and help you get settled until I can, you know, scrounge up enough money to get out there myself and... I can't go. 
What? What what the hell are you talking about, Liz? You you have to go. You gotta get away from here. It's getting worse and he'll kill you. He almost killed you right before Thanksgiving break. You were out a whole week. Let him. You're just going to give up? You're going to let him continue to hurt? I'm pregnant. What? <laughs> the school nurse. I went to her because I didn't know where to go and I had missed my period. I can't tell Susan, obviously. She gave me a test and it's positive. Liz. I'm carrying Neil's baby. His spawn. I can find you a clinic, Liz. I, I can put my car up for collateral and get a, one of those quick loans. That should give us enough cash to get to get it taken care of and to get you out of here. Don't you get it? <laughs> my life... My life is over, Billy. It's over. And you know what? I'm happy it is. What are you talking about? Liz... No, you look at me. What what are you saying? What are you going to do something? Liz, Liz, look at me. You're scaring me. You you need to leave Hawkins. If Neil finds out, my god, he will kill you. He'd be doing me a favor. Liz, Liz, I've, I already lost mom. I can't lose you too. Liz. I'm going to handle this. Look at me. Look at me. I'm going to handle this. I'm getting you out of here tomorrow. Not a day later. I'll scramble to get that money together and get you out of here. I'll find a way. Please, Liz. You have to give me... Give me at least till tomorrow. I can't hear his voice over the sound of the clock ticking. Again. He doesn't hear it, and... Doesn't seem like anybody else hears it either. I started hearing it a couple weeks ago. It started off quiet, just a gentle hum of a tick. And over time, it just got louder and louder. In my dark room, when I'm always alone, then the nightmares come. The man, or at least I think it's a man, he's always there, waiting for me, in a dark, empty room. But it, it it's almost alive. There's tentacles and veins that run 
along the walls and creep along the floors. It's almost alive. His voice is always gravelly when he finally speaks to me. Masetta, let me end your suffering. You can be free here. Be away from all the pain. The prince is never going to come. Sleeping Beauty can die. She can finally be set free. Join me. Join me here. Liz's point of view, present day. I knew that today would be my last day in Hawking's. but not in the way that Billy intended. I think back to the first time I tried Special K with Eddie. He had snuck in through my bedroom window and we snored some together. Eddie's voice, as I think back on that moment, fills my head. It's very mild. A nice, blissful high. You stop feeling all the bad things. You feel nothing. I already felt that inside. Why not match it? I pick up my untouched lunch tray and head off to the trash cans near the exits. My jeans are baggy and feel heavier on my smaller frame. I can't honestly remember the last time I ate something. Every time I try to eat, I just get sick. I'm not paying attention to my surroundings as I leave the cafeteria, keeping my eyes downcast. I run into someone nearly falling backwards onto the floor. Liz? It was his voice. Eddie. I remember how I used to long to hear his voice. And now it just stings. Eddie's point of view, present day. I feel the air gets sucked out of me as I see her. She, she looks like a ghost. Her once golden skin is now pale. Her body significantly smaller. But it's her eyes. Her eyes, though. When she looked up at me, when she's looking at me like this now, they are dull, lacking her sparkle. Dark circles frame them and make her face look hollow. Liz. Eddie. Her voice. It seems just as hollow as her eyes. The beautiful, vivacious girl that I met back in June by the pool. She's gone. She's been replaced with the shell standing in front of me. What, what, what's happening to you? Eddie, are you still going, are we still going to your place after school?
for, well, you know, um, Chrissy, uh, yeah, yeah, we're still on. Excuse me? She looks hurt. Like she thought that something was going on between Chrissy and I. I want to stop her from walking away. Beg her not to leave. I want to beg her to return to the living and to run away with me. I want to tell her that I still love her. But she disappears into the now crowded hall. Maybe it's for the best. Maybe it's best that she believes the rumors. I... I have to keep her safe. And this is the only way. But... Why does it feel like it's too late to keep her safe? Liz's point of view... After school at Forest Hills Trailer Park. Liz, what a sight for sore eyes. Eddie's not here though, sweetheart. Um, he said he had something to do with one of his friends. I shift my backpack over to my other shoulder. The one that was less battered from last night's beating trying hard not to wince as I do so. Eddie's Uncle Wayne looks at me, surprised by... I can only imagine my appearance. I had seen him since October. Hi, Wayne. Um, actually, I'm not here to see Eddie. I'm... He... He had lent me this D&D character building manual a, a few months ago, and I, I forgot to give it back. And I know he likes to meet for campaigns and stuff during breaks, so I thought I'd, I'd bring it just in case he needs it. And I, I need to grab a couple of my books that I've left here. Oh, oh, okay. Um, well, come on in. You know where his room is. I gotta go finish packing my lunch. Make yourself at home, okay? Thank you, Wayne. I slowly make my way back to his room. Trying hard not to remember all the good memories. And I try to ignore the smell of his cologne that had lingered from that morning. I pull my backpack off and drop it onto his bed, fishing out the book and opening up to the middle section to pull out the folded paper, the folded character worksheet. I unfold it and I look at it again. Vecna. The man in my dreams. He looks just like Vecna. I can end your suffering. I look around the bedroom, finding a sharpie on Eddie's desk. I pause a minute and look quickly over a note that I'm writing on the worksheet. That simple, I guess. I fold it again before going over to his nightstand. I open the drawer and I open the cigar box. I grab all the special K from the box and replace it with the folded worksheet. I then look at the promise ring. 
I hadn't taken it off. Even after everything that he said, I kept wearing it. Until now. I tossed the ring into the cigar box, hoping it would cover the cost of the K them taking from him. Goodbye, Eds. Eddie's point of view later that night. I can't stop thinking about her since I last saw her this afternoon. I can't shake that, that feeling that she isn't okay. She didn't look okay. I can't stop thinking about the look in her eyes. It looked as if she was already dead. I unlock the door to the trailer and let Chrissy in first. Yeah, sorry, Chrissy. The place is kind of a mess. Um, let me go grab the K for you. Uh, I think I have a couple grams. What the hell? I wonder who that... Did you tell anybody you were coming here? No. I open the door. My eyes falling on... The last two people I would ever expect on my doorstep. Max Mayfield and Billy Hargrove. What do you want? Hey, Eddie. Um, can we come in for just a minute? It's important. No, no. I'm in the middle of something. Not anymore. Billy pushed me aside and led Max in. He looks briefly at Chrissy, unfazed. Again, what are you doing here? Just know that this is out of pure desperation, Munson. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have come to you if I didn't have any other choice. What? What the hell do you want from me, Hargrove? I need, I need you to get Liz out of Hawkins tonight. Is this some sort of sick joke? Haven't you noticed that we aren't together anymore? Billy looked at Chrissy and then back at me, his eyes burning into mine. I know, and you are quick to move right on, aren't you? Eddie, Eddie and I aren't together. We're just friends. Thanks for clarifying, Barbie. What's your problem, asshole? My problem is my baby sister needs to get away from Hawkins before he kills her. What the hell are you talking about? Neil. I'm talking about Neil. He's been beating her and assaulting her ever since October. He got her knocked up, Eddie. He's going to kill her. He's gone close to doing it once and it's getting worse. That week before Thanksgiving, the week where she wasn't in school, he had been her so badly that she was basically in and out of consciousness. We thought she was going to die then. There it is. That pit in my stomach. It's, it's back and everything I feared. It's so much worse. Eddie, please, you need to get her away. I wouldn't ask you. 
You would be the last person I would ask. But she's in danger. He will kill her. You have to trust me on this. Hate me all you want. But please, please, I'm begging you to believe me. <sighs> look, look, I, I got some money. I, I put my car up as collateral and pawned off some of my shit. You can take all the money and use it to get her away from here. Sinclair has family in St. Louis that can take her in and get her to a clinic to handle. To handle it. I'm, I'm begging you. You have to help her. I look at Max and Billy in shock. There was so much. So, so much. It explained everything. The, the isolation, the scars, that, that listless ghost of a girl that floated from classroom to classroom, disenchanted. I'm no longer afraid. I don't want to run from Neil Hargrove anymore. I turn on my heel and I run back to my room. Hearing Chrissy, Max, and Billy follow me. Chrissy, I I have to retract my offer on the K. I'm I'm sorry. I'm going to need to push it to to some paying customers. I I think between what I have on hand and the amount of scratch I can get for all my inventory, I could give us enough money to, to get us by for just a little while. Um Max, Max, I, I need you to pack me, I need you to pack me a bag. Grab all my shit, pack me a bag, hurry, please. I open the nightstand drawer, finding my cigar box. I grab it up and throw open the lid. My, my K, it's all gone. All of it is gone. In its place was a folded piece of paper and and her ring. I dropped the box back in the drawer, my hands shaking. I pick up the folded paper and I unfold it. It was Vecna's character worksheet. I had seen it quite a few times since starting the newer campaign. My eyes shift to see a picture that was stapled to the paper of Vecna. Then my eyes move up to the upper left hand corner. <sighs> no, 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 no. Liz's familiar handwriting. I'm sorry. Love. L.H. No, 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 no. What, what's that mean? What's it mean? Oh, God. My hands are shaking. And I'm trying so hard to figure out what Liz was planning. What did she mean? She was sorry. I, I, I don't understand. Chrissy looks at the drawing of Vecna that is stapled to the worksheet. She takes a step back, shocked. What? What is it? Eddie. Who is that? Who's Vecna? He, he's, a, he's a bad guy. One of the biggest villains in D&D. &D. Why? That's 
that's the guy. That's the guy in my nightmares. He... What? What, Chrissy? What? He what? He is the one that always says that he could take, that he could end my suffering, Eddie. Max shook her head, shaking her head, a, a newfound horror on her face. Ed, Eddie, we, we gotta stop her. We gotta find her before it's too late. What are you talking about? What do you mean too late? Special K, right? You said that that you have special K. Isn't that that like anesthetic that helps you sleep? Yeah, the, it, it's one of the symptoms. What's going on? Th th there's no. <sighs> What's going on? <sighs> Betty, there's there's no time for me to say. I can't explain it right now, but Eddie, we have to get back to our house. Max. Max. Maxine, what the fuck are you talking about? Is is this something to do with Neil? No, no. She's going to use the special key to sleep. She's going to the upside down. Billy, that, that thing is going to kill her. Liz's point of view at the Hargrove house. I looked down at my chemistry book again, trying hard to figure out the best way to make this end a little quicker. With little, little pain. It might be the coward's way out, but... Neil and Susan are in town right now at some banquet for the bank. I don't know where Max or Billy are. And I really don't care. The house is finally empty and <laughs> I'm finally alone. I'm finally gonna be free. After tonight, my suffering is going to end. No one will even notice that I'm gone. Except for Neil. But his rage will be short-lived. I push the textbook off my bed, letting it fall to the floor. I look at my exhausted reflection in the mirror. Four lines of special K are cut out neatly on the hand mirror. If I'm thinking this out right, that should be enough. It should put me right to sleep. Just like Vecna said. I pick up the mirror carefully and without any further thought, I lower my nostril to the cold glass. tired. My body feels weak. I slide down onto the bed, curl up tight, and I wait. The room slowly gets darker, and my eyelids they grow heavy. 
It's just like Eddie had said. It's peaceful and you don't feel nothing. Soon, I'm back in the empty room, waiting. Eddie's point of view. I floor it. My van's engine is protesting the growing demand and speed. Billy, Max, and Chrissy are holding on for dear life as I blow through stop signs and take every shortcut I have memorized to get to Cherry Lane. I'm not one that ever prays, but I pray to whatever God that's out there that she's okay. If she didn't crush the tablets, she, she'll have more time. Give me a little more time to get to her. But all I, but all I remember is seeing her when she took Kay with me the first time. And she watched me crushing down the pills to snort. Liz, Liz is, she's so smart. She tutored me and Kim. She knows. She knows proper dosages. How chemicals react. I bite my lip hard as I push my van even harder. I pull up to the dark house on Cherry Drive and I throw the van into park. We all run. Run to the front door and it just seems like it gets further and further away as we're running and barrel into the house. My voice is frantic and foreign as I scream for her. Liz! Liz! I run to the bedroom and I find her damn door is closed. I, I grab the handle and God damn it, it's locked. Liz! Liz! Baby, please, please open the door, Liz. Fuck. Billy, Billy, help me kick this fucking door down. She's laying on the bed. Liz. Her skin is so pale and her eyes are closed. No, 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 no. Liz, come on. Wake up, baby. Liz, Liz. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Liz, baby, come on. No, 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 come on. Wake up. Liz, wake up. Please. Baby, baby. Hey, 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 come back. Come back to me, please. Please. Oh, God. No, 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 no. No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't mean any of it. Please. Was that a wake up? God damn it, wake up. Her skin is so cold to the touch. I palm her cheeks and she's not moving. God, why she's so still? Uh, Eddie, Eddie, no, no, no. Sing to her. Come on, sing to her. Sing, sing her favorite song. You gotta trust me. Eddie, please, please, you gotta sing. Maxine, what the hell are you talking about? Just, just do it, Eddie. I frantically think back. Her favorite song. Her favorite song, okay. What was her favorite song? It was a Beach Boys song. Okay, okay. Okay, I remember. I remember, okay. I may not always love you, but long as there are stars above you, you, you never need to doubt it. 
I'll make you so sure about it. God only knows what I'd be without you. If you should ever leave me, the life would still go on, believe me. The world could show nothing to me. So what good would living do me? God only knows what I'd be without you. God only knows what I'd be without you. Come on, Liz. If you should ever leave me, well, life will still go on, believe me. The world could show nothing to me. So what good would living do me? God only knows what I'd be without you. God only knows what I'll be without you. Liz. God only knows. Liz. <laughs> Liz's point of view, the upside down. I stand there in what I can only s describe as the evil side of Hawkins. I haven't been outside the empty room before. It's so cold and so scary. You arrived. I waited for you. It's time to end your suffering, Lucetta Hartgrove. You will be of great use to me with your powers. All those that wronged you, they will pay when you reach your full potential. I watch as Vecna comes towards me, his claw-like hand extended. Just as he's about to place it over my face, I hear it. I hear Eddie's voice. Eds? He's singing my favorite song. singing my favorite song. I, I didn't know he knew it. Lissetta, listen to me. That's... Eddie's point of view, a week later. Her funeral was yesterday. Neil was arrested for the assault and domestic violence of Liz. Susan, Billy, and Max, they gave their statements to Chief Hopper. He was hell-bent on bringing Neil to justice. But, it, but it's all too late. Billy had decided to bury Liz in her favorite dress. My favorite dress on her. The white dress with the red cherries. She looked so small in that casket. And the bruises. There were so many fucking bruises on her. They couldn't even cover them up with makeup. I 
I'm locked away in my room, still wearing the black suit that I wore to her funeral. I miss her. I miss her so fucking much. I try smelling the pillow that she, that she used to sleep on when she was here with me. I let it go by so long and her scent, eucalyptus and mint, it's now gone. It's gone just like her. Nothing, nothing can fix what I feel inside. I hate myself for running. I ran. I hate that I left her. I left her with no other choices. God damn it. I look down at the one photograph that I still have of her. She's she was sitting on my lap at the lunch table, <laughs> oblivious to Robin, and Robin was taking a photo of us for the yearbook. We were gazing at each other. I remember thinking, as I was looking at her that day, how, how beautiful she was, <laughs> how alive she was. She was my princess, and she never got her happy ever after. The last words I said to her back in October filled my head, tormenting me. Look, do yourself a solid. There are no, no such things as fairy tales. There are no happily ever afters. The prince isn't coming, and there's no shame in running. Get that through your head, princess. You'll hurt less when you realize this. God damn it! God damn it! Not now. Ed, Ed, Ed. Liz? There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something more, even more bizarre and inexplicable. There is another theory which states that this has already happened. Douglas Adams.